For most of our life, we are diploid. That's a genetic condition where our chromosomes have double copies. And that's like insurance. So if we have a mutation on one chromosome, we have a backup. Hopefully we don't get the mutation. For only a brief period of time in our life, and we don't, even, we don't remember it because that's when we were an egg or sperm, that's the only time that we are haploid or in. Here's the uh, karyotype or a picture of our chromosomes. You can see they occur in pairs. The main difference comes in the sex chromosomes, X and Y. I'll get to that story. Each parent contributes half of their chromosomes, and that's how we get variety in our populations. And thank goodness for that. It gives us a lot of survival value. Hetero means different. So... If the gene pairs are not identical, they're heterozygous, homo means the same. And, and maybe you're not clear what that means. Think of like one chromosome might have an eye color, hair color, skin color, uh, shape of your big toe. And the other chromosome, the homologous one, has the same uh, features, even though there might be some variation there. If that's not clear, we'll, we'll, we'll hit this some more. Dominant means that gene is going to be expressed. And when we're doing genetics problems, we use a capital letter. Recessive may not be expressed unless there's no dominant. And, and we'll get into that, okay? We're just kind of building some vocab right now. Phenotype means how it appears. Genotype are the genes. I talked about the importance of variation. You can see these are brothers. But... Genetically, they're very different because even though they have the same chromosomes, some of the genes on the chromosomes are going to be different. Pleiotropy is a condition where one gene may affect more than one trait. Uh, there's several examples of this that are pretty good. One is the um, sickle cell disease gene, hemoglobin SS. Sometimes just shorten it to HBS. It is a gene that codes for the, uh, well, the, the, the gene normally con controls for a, a plate-shaped red blood cell. And these can fold and flow into our, our blood vessels real smoothly. But in the case of the HBS, that's the recessive uh, gene, it's going to cause these sickle-shaped cells. We tend to see it in you know, African Americans, and I'll, I'll tell you why. There's a, there's a good reason for it. But let's work on a problem here. Can new, two normal parents produce a child with sickle cell disease? Yes, if both parents have recessive traits. All right, now this looks kind of complicated. So let's work it out in a slow way because, yeah, what's going on here? To carry the genetic trait, that means you have to have the dominant normal gene, but the other gene for that um, condition. So when it says if both parents have recessive genes, but they're normal. Wait, they're normal, but they have recessive genes. Okay, so let's look. Capital A, normal. S, recessive. Okay, so if we use those two, and that's kind of what they're using here. I'm following the standard protocols for uh, laying out these genetic problems. If we look at it that way, then we can go, okay, when the mother, this is a symbol for female, when she produces her eggs, haploid, so some eggs are going to have the dominant, some eggs are going to have the recessive. When the man produces sperm, haploid, some will have dominant and recessive. So if the sperm with this dominant matches the uh, egg with dominant, then you're going to have a capital A, A here, right? So just think of uh, sperm and eggs. And the result, if you work these out, looks something like this, okay? That's going to be a normal uh, blood type. This is going to be a, a carrier, so it's going to carry the recessive gene but it'll have uh, normal shaped blood cells. But there's a 25% chance. Here you have it. 
And this is a serious disorder, okay? Um, historically, they didn't live past age 20. And that's been bumped up to uh, around age 47 now because of uh, meta medication. So we look at the map of Africa and the distribution of malaria, which is transmitted by diseases. I've seen malaria. I worked in uh, Central America and Africa for combined probably three, a little over three years. I've seen a lot of malaria and I've seen people die from it. It's a very serious disease. So if you have the heterozygous condition, dominant and recessive, then you're immune to malaria, or at least you you might get sick, but you're not going to get sick, uh, sick and die. All right, I'll say a little bit more about that. So um, if you have too recessive, that's not good, because now you're going to have sickle cell, and it's going to clump in the blood vessels, and you may not live. Well, nowadays, eh, I don't want to predict. It's still a serious blood disease. All right. If you have this, okay, that looks good. Normal blood cells, yes. But if you live in equatorial Africa, you have no protection against malaria. And so here, here's some of my, my work, working mates. Tom and Boya, he had the same basic blood type that I had, two recessives. Malay, who is a Samburu, he had um, the sickle cell gene, even though he was normal, which is good. Because the Samburu, they're out in the uh, out in the fields a lot. Peter Muga, who I worked with, had the same, and that's me. We we all had the basic uh, dominant pair of genes for um, blood vessel, a uh, blood blood cell shape. Okay, so it's not a hopeless disease. Bone marrow transplants are probably the best, but new oral medications, injections, uh, therapies are increasing the um, survival rate of sickle cell. So there's hope on the, on the uh, frontier. Pedigree, this is not just for dogs and horses. Uh, we can look at genotypes over many generations. And one of the reasons that people visit genetic counselors are, um, you know, there's a family history that's often. They had a grandfather or a mother or someone with a severe genetic disorder. If they've had two or more pregnancy losses or miscarriages or abnormal test results um, off of fetal proteins or some other tests that are done during pregnancy, then uh, it's a good idea. Or over 35, that number is kind of low, I think, but um, insurance companies often use, uh, they use different numbers. So let's take a look at pedigree. All right. Uh, we use usually boxes to uh, represent male, circles that represent females. There's our capital, so that must be a dominant gene. So if you have a detached earlobe, that means your earlobe kind of hangs down. And you might think, well, who cares about earlobes? And, I mean, there's people dying out there, and we're looking at earlobes. But, you know, if we understand earlobes, then we can understand things like hemophilia. All right, so let's just work this out. Attached earlobe. Looks like this. Okay, so you can see dominant recessive doesn't matter. I mean, one's not better than the other, unless you're going to hang a lot of jewelry, and, and then you, you do want that detached one. All right, so let's set up our problem. Let's say a man with attached earlobes, so that means kind of almost no earlobe, marries a woman with detached earlobes. So she has big earlobes, but she's a carrier. Hmm. One with detached. Okay. Second generation. So all their children have detached earlobes. So I have to look at, just hang on a minute. I gotta look at this. Detached is dominant. Okay. Detached is dominant. So if all their children have detached, then we know for sure they have one capital letter, right? Because that's dominant. Capital E. <laughs> you think I would know this stuff. The son of the second generation has a children with a woman with detached earlobes. Oh my gosh. What is her genotype if both their daughters have attached? Okay, attached is recessive. So, there's a recessive gene in here. 
I'm thinking there's recessive genes. These two parents have recessive genes. Because how else can you get a fully recessive? Yeah, let's take a look. Aha, okay. <laughs> Even though I wrote this lecture, you know, I, I don't I don't know everything. Okay. So here's our um uh detached. Attached, dominant. Remember these guys? They all had the detached dominant gene. But then these guys, their children, had the recessive trait. The only way to get two recessive genes is if each parent gave a sperm with a recessive and an egg with a recessive. Okay, so, so you get the basic idea how we can kind of look back at different generations and go, okay, grandma had this condition, grandpa had this condition, and here's my brothers, and so I want to marry this girl, or woman, excuse me, and what's the chances? Because what if this is a serious disease? Like grandpa died when he was 33. Okay, I don't know if I, I want to, uh, maybe adoption. Okay. So here's a more serious example of pedigree. Queen Victoria, 19th, 20th century, a disease called bleeders or hemophilia. What happens, okay, this is a, a case where there's not enough platelets and blood clotting uh, proteins. And so people bleed a lot easily. And it's a rubbery kind of, you know, there's blood under the skin. And so um, there's internal bleeding as well. I think I mentioned that here, yeah. So it can be serious, especially when there's bleeding in the joints. There could be permanent damage or uh, damage to the brain. Okay, so this hemophilia is a, a serious disorder, is, but it has the same concept as the earlobes because um, it's transmitted and we tracked, uh, well, I didn't, but genetic scientists were able to track the pedigrees across like Spain and all the way to Russia, all over Europe, <laughs> all these people with um, hemophilia or bleeder's disease could be tracked back to Queen Victoria, who was a carrier. All right. All right. Thanks for listening.